This video is about the most insane backstory that I've ever seen for a Pokemon. You're gonna learn something new today. This is from Did You Know's channel. Originally, the link for that will be in the description, but I thought the reaction deserved its own spot on the channel just because of some of the things that were talked about and just how insane the backstory behind this Pokemon actually is. I hope you do enjoy the video, but make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Go, go subscribe, thank you. Chat, this is the story of Lugia. I have been told this is a pretty good video. Let's Let's check it out. This is Japanese scriptwriter and novelist Takeshi Shudo. Shudo. By the way, Max Mofo is actually the narrator for this, which is kind of insane. Shudo was the head writer for the first five years of the Pokemon anime, as well as the first three Pokemon movies. His creative process was fueled by alcohol and tranquilizers. And in the last two years Tra before his death, he became obsessed with the only Pokemon he ever created, Lugia. The full story behind the diving Pokemon's creation is a long and complicated story involving substance abuse, seizures, and contributions from just about every corner of Pokemon oh bureaucracy. God. To get the full picture, Did You Know Gaming searched through hundreds of Shudo's Japanese blog posts and translated everything he ever wrote about Lugia, along with some leaks and several other key documents. But before Damn, we dive they put into the Lugia's in bizarre this. origin story, let's talk about where Lugia wasn't created, at Game Freak headquarters. In retrospect, oh. it almost seems Called inevitable out. that Lugia would appear in Pokemon's second generation, especially since Lugia's place as Silver's box legendary is nothing short of iconic. But Lugia's inclusion in Gen 2 wasn't originally part of the plan. The earliest builds of Pokemon Gen Gold and one? Silver were shown to the public only once, at Space World 1997. That, remember the Space World demo? Remember the Space World demo that everyone did videos on? Back in the day, they had all the beta Pokemon, like the beta version of like Murkrow and, and all of these old like starters. That was a big thing, like a long time ago. There was, there was, there was, there was like a whole demo that you can play now as well. E3-style gaming expo held in Japan exclusively for Nintendo products. Gold and Silver's 1997 demos were look very that, different- Look at that! Look at that! The hop with the tail. All the beta Pokemon looked whack in that. ...to the game's final build, taking place in a region based yes. on the entirety of Japan and containing lots of Pokemon that eventually got cut from the game's final build. But after the expo, there was some Nintendo cool ones and Game Freak locked those demos away in their vaults forever, leaving fans around Sad. the world wondering about all the secrets and lost Pokemon inside. It was one of gaming's biggest mysteries for over two decades. Until that we is, find until out. until 2018, when a hacker going by the pseudonym Wacko broke into Nintendo's servers and stole tons of development assets. Before Kids getting was Wacko? arrested, the first thing they leaked was the now legendary Space World demo. Fans marveled at all the newly found lost Pokemon, but one very important Pokemon was missing from the Pokedex, Lugia. Yeah. Later leaks stemming from the same hack revealed that Lugia's first appearance in Gold and Silver's development was dated June 1999. According to Shudo, that's because it wasn't Game in. Freak who created Lugia. It was him. He came up with Lugia specifically for the second Pokemon movie, which released one month later in July 1999. When he created Lugia, Shudo originally they thought weren't gonna it remained in the exclusive game. to the film. In fact, he was actually surprised when it appeared in the games at all. Toward the end of his life, Shudo That's interesting. Like, he he made it he made a Pokemon specifically for the movie that he didn't expect to be put into the game. It's it's really strange to even like think of the concept of yeah, there could be a Pokemon in the movie that would might never be in the game, but I guess that could have been a thing like back then. Shudo wrote on his blog, since Lugia was a Pokemon I designed myself solely for the new movie, I was surprised it ended up getting used later in the games and TV show. Actually, I thought of Lugia as a Pokemon exclusive to the movies. By modern standards, what? Shudo's expectation okay. that Lugia would be a theater exclusive Pokemon seems absurd. Of course yeah, it found its way into the games, but this was still early days for the franchise and series standards were still being formed. And could you imagine if there, there was like movie exclusive Pokemon that just like never made it to the games. That, that would be kind of insane, not gonna lie. Even knowing what we know today, it's worth pointing out that there are still Pokemon forms that appear in official media, but never made their way into the mainline series. Like Wait, Mecha Mew 2 from Pokemon Live, oh. Primal Dialga from Pokemon Mystery. I love Primal Dialga so much and its theme, its theme is so good. 
Its theme is one of the best in the series. Please, if you haven't heard that theme, go and listen to it. It is such a good theme. Every dungeon, and of course, Shadow Lugia from Pokemon XD yes. Gale of Darkness. Gold Dude, and Silver's development sick. began as soon as Red and Green were finished, with Game Freak originally saying Gen 2 would release in 1997. But their release date ended up getting delayed by a full two years. And according to Shudo, if it wasn't for that massive delay, Lugia's inclusion in Gold and Silver even would exist. have been impossible. Which raises wow. an interesting question. Question. If that two year delay never happened, which Pokemon was originally planned as Silver's mascot? Okay, I I'm just gonna make a guess right now. If it wasn't gonna be Lugia, then I, I have to imagine it would have been Celebi. I, I have to, like, it must have been Celebi. If it wasn't gonna be Lugia, it probably would have been Celebi. More leaks from the Wacko hack have since revealed an even earlier proto Pokedex in which Ho -Oh, Unknown, and a third Pokemon were all grouped together. This lost the hell Pokemon is that? ultimately got scrapped, but it appears to have been based on Shu Shu from Chinese mythology, also oh, known cool. as lion dogs. In China, they're considered they're guardians, so nice. and Shu Shu statues are often placed at the entrances of imperial palaces, temples, government offices, and the homes of the wealthy. They're so sick! I've always thought that, like, Arcanine kind of reminded me of, of that mon. I mean, it's probably based off of that mon slightly as well, but, like, having more Pokemon based off of that, like, idea, I think would be sick. Oh, is clearly based on the Chinese phoenix, Fong Huang, which suggests this pair of Chinese Chinese inspired legendary beasts may have been the two Pokemon Game Freak originally planned for Gold and Silver's box art. The developers hmm. themselves never commented on the leak, however, so that's all just a theory, and you'd do well to take it with a grain that's of salt. Just with the a sole theory, exception boys. of Lugia, every other Pokemon was made in house by Game Freak designers, and it was a unique situation that Except allowed Shudo, Lugia? the writer of the anime and movies, the opportunity to make a Pokemon of his very own. In fact, it was only possible because of a tragedy that took place in late 1997. What fans now call okay. the Pokemon Shock. The anime's 38th episode, Cyber Soldier oh, Porygon, Porygon, contained a series of flashing red and blue lights that sent hundreds of Japanese kids into fits of seizures. And yeah, good job. Good job, guys. Well done. Well done. Managed to try and like uh, uh, murder your fan base. Good job, guys. Well, yeah, well, good one. Hospitalized almost 700 people. In the wake of the tragedy, every Pokemon episode was pulled from the good. airwaves and Pokemon yeah, executives scrambled to deal with the situation, fearing it could result in the end of Pokemon altogether. So with all his bosses distracted, Shudo took advantage of the situation. What was their apology like? Hey, uh, guys, we're really sorry that we hospitalized 700 children. Won't do it again. Promise. Put us back on TV. What was, what, I wonder what that comment conversation was like situation. to make the first Pokemon movie Mewtwo Strikes Back into a much darker film than his bosses would have otherwise allowed. Shudo says his bosses would have stopped him if they had the chance. But after Mewtwo Strikes Back broke box office records and became the highest grossing Japanese film to ever release in America, Shudo was given near total creative freedom to write the second Pokemon movie. And the first thing he did was crack open a bottle of booze. It's an interesting way to start. I was going to say, I'm glad that they did give him creative freedom because those movies are fantastic. After retiring from the Pokemon franchise, Shudo admitted on his personal blog that he relied heavily on alcohol and pills to write both the Pokemon anime and the movies. He talked Jeez. about it a lot, but just to illustrate the extent of it all, here's just one example of the sort of thing he was writing. If I can't drink, I take tranquilizers. Of course, the ones you can normally buy. Tranquilizers! Of course, the ones you can normally buy in a pharmacy. Tranquilizers! And a pharmacy, not a legal substances. When I get a little bit high, it helps me sort out all my confused thoughts. However, when it comes to alcohol and drugs, you need to know your limit. Like, if I start to think that one plus one doesn't necessarily equal two, when these become difficult, it means I'm drunk. If I get any more intoxicated after that, I won't be able to think productively, and there's also the danger of tripping somewhere and hurting myself. Shudo Yay. makes it undeniably Jeez, clear he was under the influence pretty much the entire time he was working on the Pokemon on franchise. And when I think that's actually a, like a really common thing for creatives is to, it's just, e it's easier. And a lot of people resort to like pills and drugs and, and, and some kind of something to help, some kind of substance to help uh, uh, them create what they create, which is honestly, it's, it's really sad that people feel the need to resort to that. But went into particular detail do. about his intake while he was writing the Pokemon second movie. So it's fair to say that Lugia wasn't just a result of the Pokemon shock, 
but it was also born out of Shudo's substance abuse. Even before Shudo came up with the movie's plot, the first ideas he came up with were two main characters. The Collector, who went on to become Lawrence III, and what he called Pokemon X, a placeholder name for what eventually became Lugia. This is Pokemon X who then, years later, was transformed into XD001 in Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. It all comes together. Why, when Lugia later appeared in the anime, Dr. Namba refers to Lugia as Pokemon X. What action do you want to XD take regarding the mysterious Pokemon X? According to Shudo, X was supposed to be a creature different from Pokemon, since it had to symbolize life for humans too. It's a symbol of life, but also a symbol of coexistence. Originally, Pokemon didn't have genders, but X symbolizes deep ocean currents and created life on Earth. It's a maternal Pokemon. Shudo originally wrote the I movie based around Pokemon X and purposefully excluded series regulars like Ash, Pikachu, and Team Rocket. He Yes, yes, exclude them. Get more like Chronicles stuff. Chronicles was fantastic. We don't, you don't need Ash. But then again, the, the, the higher ups are probably like, no, 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 no. We need Ash. Ash is great. We need a more Ash, please. He wasn't particularly fond of Ash and wanted him written out of the anime. But Shudo's subordinates asked- And yes, chat is actually making a good point. Pokemon X being the symbol of life actually relates to the actual Pokemon X where Xerneas is the Pokemon of life. So it's all- comes together boys him to inject ash into the script anyway which he eventually agreed to as a way of showing his willingness to compromise pokemon x finally got an official name during an all hands on deck production meeting staff from every corner of the franchise attended including staff working on the film game freak employees and even distribution staff everyone in the meeting voted and the winning name of course turned out to be lugia, lugia. the most likely inspiration nice. for its name is lugia a latin word i wonder i wonder what the other possible i wonder what the other possibilities were like what what was the other names that we didn't get that means to lie dormant probably chosen because the first time lugia yeah, is like ever seen or by something the you know something something good like that the film when it's lying dormant deep under the ocean the name might also draw partial inspiration from the beluga whale which lugia bears the beluga some resemblance to Lugia's the beluga whale the story has some parallels with the great white whale in moby dick with lawrence playing the part of captain ahab but it's unclear if that was actually Shudo's intention. As far as lore inspiration, Shudo may have drawn from Japanese mythology's god of the sea, the benevolent dragon Ryujin. Not oh, only sick. does Lugia resemble a wyvern dragon, but in the Japanese version of the movie, Lugia is also called the god of the sea. Lugia has the power to summon storms, as does Ryujin, like when he used a hurricane Neptune. to repel a- Neptune is the perfect name for Lugia, the god of the sea. Fleet of Mongolian ships invading Japan. The Ryujin connection was eventually made even stronger with Lugia's shiny colors, which match those of Ryujin's legendary underwater castle. One key difference though, is that while Ryujin is a male god, Shudo specifically created Lugia as a female god. But unfortunately for okay. Shudo, Lugia ended up resembling Ryujin a little bit more than he might've intended. He created Lugia as the maternal symbol of life and deep ocean currents. But like many Pokemon, after coming up with the creature's concept, the details were out of the creator's control. Not just Lugia's mm. name, but also its voice and gender. He felt strongly that as a maternal god, Lugia should have been voiced by a female actress, but the film studio went was against a, was his a wishes fella, wasn't and it? chose a male actor instead. In the final year of his life- Hey, has, like, I'm pretty sure he had like a deep voice, like, listen to me, <laughs> listen, listen to me, Ash. Did he talk in the movie? Or am I misremembering things? I'm pretty sure he did talk in the movie. He was like, Ash. <laughs> Ash, we need to go to the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea, Ash. We need to go under the sea. Shudo wrote at great lengths about the anguish this caused him. Here's just a few excerpts from really? his final months. One of the regrets I have about writing the second Pokemon movie was that I didn't push back on the gender assigned to Lugia. Although its gender isn't addressed in the plot, it's given a male voice, but it's a maternal Pokemon. To make matters worse, this is using rough. a male voice actor for Lugia was a 
a decision made during a big meeting with many participants. Was Advertisements he in the meeting? Advertisements had already aired. It was too late. We couldn't suddenly change Lugia into a female. But the more I thought about it, the less I could imagine X being anything else but female. I was going oh down God. alcohol and drugs. I started to feel like I wanted to die. Not only was Lugia voiced by a man, but it was made That's genderless crazy. in the games. Shooter How much wrote it a lot affected about him. Lugia in the year before he died. But it was the loss of its maternal identity that pained him most. In late 2010, he collapsed in the smoking room of a train station and was rushed to the hospital, but tragically didn't survive. The cause of death was a subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is essentially a brain bleed whose risk factors include cigarettes and alcohol. It was Shudo's substance abuse Jeez. that fueled his writing and gave birth to Lugia, but sadly, it may have also been what killed him. This brings us to the end of Shudo's story, but it's far from that the end of That is a very Lugia's. tragic story. To continue, we need to rewind back to Gen 2's development. The first just, just to pause for a second there. Like I said, I, I mentioned that creatives a lot of the time turn to substances to, to help them cope or help them create. Um, because it, it it can in some cases, but it is it is like a genuine problem um, with with creative people that they feel like they need to rely on certain things. And if you are one of those people, um, I, I wish you the best, and I wish you I, I hope that you were able to to kind of get some semblance of control over it and eventually stop doing that. Because as you can see, there's many unhappy endings that can come from that. First Lugia beta sprite ever found is dated back to a month before the second movie landed in Japanese theaters. It looks nearly identical to Lugia's final design, but has six dorsal spines instead of the ten on the finished sprite. But there's an even older beta sprite dating back to the Shushu period that may have been an even earlier form of Lugia, an unnamed boat Pokemon, now known only oh my by God. its proto Pokedex number, number 344. Dude, I've been playing way too much Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That thing looks like a Viking raid boat. Just like Lugia, 344 appears to draw partial inspiration from plesiosaurs, a type of marine reptile that went extinct 65 million years ago, along nah, with the long. dinosaurs. Some of its physical details Looks like are similar as well, especially its dorsal design, long neck, and its tail, which has led some fans to speculate that after Shudo came up with the Pokemon X concept, Game Freak might have used 344 as a springboard to come up with a brand new design that ultimately became Lugia. As an apparent Dude, I love that look though, it looks like a longbow! Also believe 344 may have been evolutionary related to two other lost Pokemon from that version of the Proto Dex. However, since that particular leak lacked evolution data and the developers themselves have never commented on those lost Pokemon, any relation between Lugia and 344 is entirely speculative. It's unclear if Shudo made any sketches himself. And as a matter of fact, in 2009, Shudo said he doesn't know who all was involved in the design process. However, we do know who to credit for Lugia's final design. Like all yeah. Gen 2 Pokemon, Game Freak's art director Ken, Ken Sugimori, Sugimori the boy, the man, the myth, the legend. What an absolute titan of an individual. Final revisions and drew the watercolor artwork that became its official design. Although it's worth I mean Lugia's out design is after fantastic Lugia landed on the silver screen, which by the way became the second highest earning Japanese movie to ever hit American theaters. There was nice. one significant detail that wasn't truly cemented until almost a decade later. In the movie, Lugia was white with blue spikes, and its in-game sprites right. were white and blue as well. But Ken Sugimori actually released two contradictory pieces of watercolor artwork. Ken! We contradicting ourselves, are we, mate? Come on now, Ken! During Gen 2. One with blue spikes, and another with black spikes. After that, oh. Lugia's sprites switched to oh. black in Gen 3, as well as in Gen 4. I always thought there was something a bit weird about the Gen Generation 3 sprite. It should be blue, but I think I think blue's definitely the way to go for Lugia. But blue's definitely like I, the black just doesn't. I'm not a fan of the black on there. The blue's definitely the way to go there. Beta, but finally in Gen 4, the sprites switched back to blue spikes. This was also the case with Lugia's Gen 4 artwork. And after Gen 3 that, just looks it was weird. never seen with black spikes ever again. There's good. Also Very the good decision. Of Lugia's elemental type, a topic that's caused some confusion ever since its inception. Neither the film or Shudo himself ever directly addressed Lugia's type. Although, presumably, Which is when Shudo created the god- Psychic and flying, by the way! The god of the sea! You'd think he would be-
Skinwalker. of the sea, he probably intended her as half water type. But when yeah. Game Freak went to program it into gold and silver, they ended up making it dual type psychic and flying. According to programmer and designer Shig As you go to the sea, I must be in the psychic type. It's gotta be. Yeki Morimoto, who's best known as the creator of Mew, Lugia was made half psychic simply because they wanted to make it strong. In the July 2009 issue of- Oh my god, you can't be real. They're like, yeah, our game is totally unbalanced. Psychic type devastates everything. So we're gonna disregard the god of the sea mantra and just make it psychic type because we want to make it strong. Dude, come on. I know this was like 20 years ago for Game Freak now, but like, come on, man. Nintendo Dream Magazine, he said, we wanted Lugia to give the impression of being a powerful Pokemon. So we settled on Psychic. And we know that water types suck and they're not strong. For the second time instead of water type. In other words, Lugia is not a water type, despite being underwater, because due to its flying type appearance and psychic type being the symbol of a powerful Pokemon at the time. For some extra context to what Morimoto is saying here, wild, it's worth dude. noting that psychics were so powerful back in the 90s that Mew and Mewtwo were banned from all three World Cups. And even after the ban, nearly half the Pokemon used by the finalists were all psychic types. Because they're busted. Shadow Lugia, or as it's known in Japan, Dark Lugia. It made its Yo, first I love that. and as of the making of this video, its only appearance in the 2005 GameCube title Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. In the game, Shadow Lugia is referred to by its code name XD001, uh, which uh. some fans believe is a reference to its origins as Pokemon X. Weirdly, I do. I the believe Pokemon that. The company never actually said what XD stands for, so fans have been speculating for the past 15 years whether it's Extra Darkness, Extreme Darkness. Darkness, or some other abbreviation. Extra dip. Did you know gaming got in contact with Tsukasa Tawada? The McDonald's never gives you enough dip. Composer who created Shadow Lugia's theme, as well as all the music in both Colosseum and Gale of Darkness. He told us the XD actually stands for Extra Dimension. And when we asked if the developers intended Where? XD001 as Where's a nod to Pokemon X, he didn't seem to even know what we were talking about. Just like oh. the original Lugia, well. its shadow form wasn't created by Game Freak. Both its concept and its design were made by Gale of Darkness's developers at Genius Sonority. Lu God, bring them back, bring them back. Give them another shot, dude. Give them another shot. Let them have another shot. Let them have another shot, please. I'm begging, make a sequel to XD. That game is so good. Lugia was the only shadow Pokemon in the game to receive a unique design. Whereas every other shadow Pokemon retained their standard appearance just with a purple haze. Shadow Lugia yeah. is often cited- I imagine that's more of just a, like, we didn't want to put in the work kind of thing, because designing its separate designs for every individual shadow Pokemon would just be absolutely insane. But just doing the one XD where it's like, oh yeah, we have the one XD. This is, this looks really good now. It would be a lot less work. Cited as the very first Pokemon ever designed by James Turner, the Englishman who eventually worked oh, his boy. way through the ranks to oh, become boy. Sword and Shield's art director. But just like the original I actually Lugia, love James. He's great. Was really <laughs> Wait, what's the rollout? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, first off, James, shout out to James. Absolutely fantastic individual. You should see the stuff that he posts on Twitter. He posts great art on Twitter all the time too. Great. James, fantastic. Look at this rollout. Sword Shields art director. But just like the original Lugia, it's dark side was really <laughs> more of a team. Motherfuckers, a pancake! According to James, Lugia was chosen as the star of the game by the writing team. He said he doesn't know why they chose Lugia, but presumably it's, it's because ho -Oh was the star of the Ore game that came before. Pokemon was Coliseum. it? But James was it, wasn't though? the guy who drew the first sketches either. It was the art director, Hiromoto Senichi, who's probably most famous as the illustrator of the Star Wars Return of the Jedi manga series. After Hiromoto hammered down the basic design, Shadow Lugia was finally handed off to James, who chose the colors and finalized the design. James, James also smashed made it. Shadow Lugia's he smashed official it. art that appears on the box art, as well as the CGI cutscenes that featured Shadow Lugia. Shudo grew obsessed with Lugia, and similarly, James also had a great affection to Shadow Lugia. Both of them considered Lugia their baby, in some Aww, sense. James calls it his dark child, and occasionally laments on Twitter that he'd love to see Shadow Lugia return someday. 
Unfortunately, the only way to transfer Shadow so. Lugia to a mainline Pokemon it's game is by purifying it, at which point it just becomes an ordinary They're Lugia. never going to do it. They're never going to let him do it. Shadow is trapped forever on fans' GameCube memory cards. But now that James is working Game Freak proper and has a lot more clout as the art director, maybe someday yes. we could see Shadow Lugia finally return to the series. James is going to get in there. He's been working from the inside the entire time, working his way up through the ranks, and eventually... He's gonna pull a fast one and he's gonna bring back Shadow Lugia. Cannot wait to see it. In 2020, the Venusaur, Charizard, and Blastoise clones from wow. Mewtwo Strikes Back made their way into Pokemon Go, so Shadow Lugia might someday make a comeback as well, even if it's only in a spin off. I hope so. If you enjoyed this video, cool do us a favor and click the like button. We're trying something new. Chat, this is why Lugia is the best Pokemon. Like, there is, I guarantee you, there's no other Pokemon with this much backstory. And Lugia is absolutely fantastic. Anyway, sub to my YouTube channel, uh, join the subreddit, etc, 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 join the subreddit, jo seriously join the subreddit though. Thank you so much to our Twitch subs and YouTube members of the day. Remember, if you are a YouTube member or 